Hello friends, <coughs> Francis Bacon, we have seen four essays, a number of studies of truth, of revenge, and of parents and children. <coughs> now closely related to the fourth essay in our series is Married of Mild and Single Life. Today, as usual, we will go through the, you know what is marriage and you know what is single life, isn't it? <coughs> All of you are sitting here, <coughs> you are single men and women, I hope so. Or maybe one or two are married, I think, okay. And so then you can anyhow, <coughs> for both of you it is very good. I mean, you get a knowledge about, about what is married, married life, <laughs> what is single life. What are the advantages of married life? What are the advantages of single life? And so on. So very extremely practical. In 21 sentences, he has summed up. He has summed up. I mean, Bacon has summed up all what you you need to know about married life. Although it has got a, we can say, a leaning, a support. The, uh, the general support is given to men rather than women. So you may think that this anti-feminist, not anti-feminist, he speaks about women also, but most of the time he is speaking about men. Okay. So first point is wife and children, they are impediments to what of great merit. That's the first point. One, wife and children, uh, children are impediments. Impediments means obstacles. They are obstacles, you know, obstacle race, like that. So obstacles or impediments, impediments to great works, to great works. Means lasting, lasting contribution that you, you can make, the great, or, or works of great merit, or we can say impediments to works of that's better, I think, no? to use that, the phrase or the words given in the essay itself. Uh, impediments to works of, works of great merit. Now, I don't know how, in what way it becomes an impediment. Maybe, say for example, missionaries may be an impediment. Because they have to move from different, uh, one place to another, and they have to work among, uh, say, <coughs> A people who are not as civilized as the general public. So that may be a problem. Otherwise, as says, you know, you think of Abraham Lincoln was married, Socrates was married, <laughs> and then uh, uh, the great presidents from America that married, uh, Michelangelo was a married person, Shakespeare was a married person, who are not. All those people who have done great works, works of many persons, they are married. Understand? So we will discuss that later. But the time being is I think that is because um, Bacon himself remained unmarried for a very long period of time. You know? He married after his 40s. So that may be one of the reasons he said. But before that he had done all this great work, you know? advancement of learning and, uh, and uh, his, uh, his books. And not only that he was Lord Chancellor, so that uh, that day he was unmarried. So that may be the reason. Wife and children, they are impediments to works of great men. That's one point one. Point two, married people have the married people, if you are married, then you have great care of future. Great care of future. Married means great care. Care of future. Why? Because you know that you your life does not terminate <laughs> when you die. Yeah, it will continue. So you have to provide for them, provide for education, provide for their future, provide for their well-being, their health. You have to have good, uh, give them good food, nutritious food, and so. So you have, you should be very, you will be very careful in spending money. Otherwise, suppose you have nobody to look after and they, you are a free man, then you go on spending. Go with your friends and be lavish and all those. Otherwise, 
On the other hand, if you have got married, if you have got wife and children, then you say you have to look after them. So married people have great care for future. Now third point is the negative points, negatives of single life. Negatives. Negatives of single life. Now, what are the negatives of single life? He, he says one, two, three, four, one. They are will be extremely selfish. Because they don't know how to um, the sacrifice for others. They will be extremely selfish. And secondly, wife and children, they consider us bills and charges. So because they think that after giving food, they will say, you pay this much to me. <laughs> In the family, I don't know. Some people may be doing that, I have no idea. So for them, it's a burden. It's a financial burden. Bills and charges means financial burden. And third point is, they think, uh, they think that they will be richer. See that is. So, because they are nothing, if they have got, suppose a person that has got 10 acres of land, or he has a fortune of, say, 1 crore rupees, then if he has children, right, he has to divide. Otherwise, he will think, oh, I have, I am, I have got uh, 1 crore rupees, and I am a very rich person. In a, in a locality, he will think, oh, they have got children and they have to divide and that, so, so on. In my case, it's not like that. I am very rich, so like you. The feeling is there. And fourth is that uh, he will think like this, you know, I, I am rich and I will remain rich. So he will look at another person and say, oh, he has got 100 acres of land, but what of that? He has 50 children. So the next generation, you will have only each, each child will get only two son or daughter, they will get two acres of land. But mine, ten acres or fifty acres will remain as such. So I will be very rich. I will be the richest man in this locality. So this is a negative point, you see. So first thing is, first negative point is one, you are selfish. That is extremely selfish. Secondly, that is selfish because they are unable to make any cycle. And children because a financial burden. They are doing bills and charges, no? financial burden, they have spend a lot of money. And third is they want to remain rich. And fourth is they say, I will remain richest because other people, they will have to divide their property and their fortune. Plus, then the positive side of a uh, single man. Suppose fourth point is positives. What are the positives of single man? First and foremost, you are liberty, you are free. That's the thing. Absolute freedom. You think that today you don't want to go home? No. You want to sleep on the street? You sleep on the street. You want to go for a tour? You go for a tour. You need not ask anybody. Liberty. Secondly, he says, according to Bacon, they will be the best friends, best masters. They will be the best friends, best masters and best servants, because they don't have anything else to do. See, if a single man is your friend, he will be a very good friend, because he has nobody, nowhere else to go. He will be always attached, he will be born. And best masters also, why, why, why the, the single man will be best masters? Because again, he has no responsibility, nothing of that. He can, single-minded devotion, he can do his work. And the servants, same thing. In return, you do the single-minded devotion for the servant also. Understood? And then, our fifth point is, single life suited to whom? Suitability. Suitability of single life. Who are the person? Most suited. Churchmen. Priests. First of all, they cannot marry. They take the vow of celibacy. So they, they cannot mind. Secondly, judges, if, if they are, uh, suppose, there is a saying, no? even the, even the king's wife should be above suspicion. Not only the king, but the king's wife should be above suspicion. That means, suppose your, uh, your wife is a bit corrupt, or servant is corrupt, then what will happen is, and you, 
their influence definitely will, they will take bribes in your name. They will go to the party concern and say, I will get this thing done, provided you give this much, or give me a person like that. So if you are a single, there is no problem. See, the same with the magistrates, judges, magistrates, and soldiers also. In soldiers, uh, they say that a single life suited for them, because they are going around them in different places. So, they, for them also it is uh, better, according to, according to, uh, and uh, according to Bacon, yes. And then, uh, sixth point he says, about wife and children. Now here, this is wife and children. Sixth point is also wife and children. And, yes. Then, and what does that he say? He says, wife and children, they are disciplined. You see that? Uh, there is some kind of restrictions in your life. They will impose certain, some restrictions, so there is discipline. You become kind, you become tender heart, you become a loving husband, and you become a loving father. So that is the... So, in other ways, more of your soft side of your life, soft side of your um, character will develop, if you have got by friendship. Understand? And then seven this he says about chaste women. Chaste women. Chaste women, he says, usually are proud and forward because they are proud of their chastity. So they say, look at me. I am I can control myself. So that that feeling. I can control myself. So chaste women usually are proud as well as forward they say. Because they are, they are merit of chastity. Okay. Then, another point is, roles that should be played by wives. Roles. Eight. What are the roles? When you are young, he is, she is your mistress. When you are middle age, she is your companion. <coughs> and old age, she is your nurse. But the other way around he doesn't say. Suppose he is the, then the young woman who you are to have, a middle aged woman who you are to have, and old age who you are to have. That he doesn't say. Eh? That's the thing. Now, next, and the eighth point is when to marry. Seven, eight, ninth point is when to marry. Young people, not yet. And elder people never. But I, I have seen, you must have seen you know, in newspapers, uh, the, a person who is 80 getting married to a woman who is 75. So in that case, we cannot say. It may be at that time, when, uh, during the Renaissance period, lifespan was maybe short. Now people live up to 92, 95, 100, 102, and so on. So what to do? So they can, I think this is a kind of, uh, you cannot uh, fully agree with Francis Bacon because life these days and life those days is if you come, compare, the lifespan has increased tremendously due to um, modern medical facilities and so So that is meant to mind. And then he says, uh, bad husbands, uh, they are good people <laughs> because Bad husbands, husbands, they are lucky. They get the good wives. Bad husbands, they get good wives. For two reasons it is. One, the wife wants to show that I can patiently bear this man. The other is, the wife wants to make him kind by her kind deeds and kind. So that is maybe the reason. That is. This, this is applicable even today. Now, to, for two reasons, he says, bad husband usually get a good wife. One, one, one point is that he, by her kind dealings with him, he can convert him. Other is that, to show to the world that, see, although he is such a ruffian or a rogue, I am, I am suffering him and look at me. I have got great patience. So pride and patience, that's the thing. Understand? 
Stress just. Analysis. See, you have got uh, if you are the love marriage, that's the element of it. So if you are your own choosing, this you doesn't say love marriage. If it is your own choosing, then what we call love marriage. Now, if something goes wrong, you better suffer it yourself. Because it is your own choosing. Now there is a saying, you know, love marriage begins with a kiss and ends with a kick. Not always. These things you cannot uh, generalize. Some people quarrel. Even arranged the marriages is like that. Some people quarrel, some people don't quarrel, some people are just, some people become very patient, some people suffer, some people think that it is my destiny, some people fight against and kill <laughs> the spouse. See? Husband sometimes kill wife, wife, wife will kill husband. So these things you are reading in the newspaper. See, those things we cannot generalize. Understand? Now, these are the uh, 11 points that he gives in 10, just 21 sentences. I think everything he has covered up with. So, so can compare with short as he has covered everything. So once again, if you go through, you will find wife and children. So some, for some unknown reason, he, a uh, beggar is not very favorable to getting married, I think. He married, his, his was late marriage, was, and he had no children, see. Uh, he married an older man's uh, daughter with a great fortune. So, from there we, and of course he was more and more, uh, he, he wanted to bring all the knowledge within his province. So his single-minded devotion was to knowledge, science. See, as, you, as I told you earlier, that he died sacrificing his life on the altar of science. His own, he, he may, he, when he was already suffering from pneumonia, he experimented with the snow, with the ice. See, and then he bought a, once he was traveling and he stopped his cart and um, he, he bought a, a fowl, fowl means a bird. And then he cut it open, removed its inside and, and, and uh, Filled it with the snow to find out the, the consequences of refrigeration, so to say. And he died of pneumonia. Because he was already suffering from fever. So, but still, you see, his thirst for knowledge. Understand? Yes. So, maybe. And your wife and children, according to you know, his wife, impediments. You cannot do uh, It's an obstacle. Secondly, married people, they have great, for, great care for future, that is self-explanatory. Third, the negatives of single life is you are selfish, you are financial person, you consider um, your uh, wife and children, then he, he wants to be remain rich and he wants to boast that I will be the richest in the next generation. When the next generation, they get their properties divided, their fortunes divided. And positions. He says that the positives of single life is liberty. Single men make best friends, best masters, and best servants. And if this is suitable, see, uh, why you find suitability? That means what, what we say is that the uh, uh, single life is suited to who? Suitability means sometimes you may be suitability that is I'm speaking about single life. For example, it says churchmen, judges, magistrates, and this. See, and to an extent, soldiers. In some other place, he says soldiers is better for them to manage to become a uh, that is tolerant and all those, to develop good qualities. And then he has a sixth is five wife and children. Wife and children, they have got a, a, they have got a disciplining effect that we also have. <laughs> Everybody who is married knows that. Wife and children, they have got a disciplining effect. They put restrictions on you. Yes, that is a discipline. And then you have got the uh, eyes. Ah, so you can say wife and discipline. Discipline. Disciplining yeah? effect. So I think the point will be clearer. And chaste women, they are proud of their chastity. Uh, that is roles. Young men, wives, 
they are mistresses in middle age they are they are companions and in old age they are nurses when to marry yeah not yet elder never and then bad husbands they give good wives i don't know why <laughs> that is that is what he says because it is a patients they are proud of their patients and also they can convert may effect some conversion on them and if it is love marriage then you have to be your own choosing so you better suffer those things and what the consequences by yourself i think now this is the overview of this from tomorrow onwards or the next class onwards we will take part by part this 21 sentences and we will discuss this you can also join the discussion and we will clarify thing any problems etc till then bye have a nice time you enjoy reading francis bacon if you if you don't if you don't have a copy of francis bacon's essays that means you missed your half of your life <laughs> no doubt and just having a copy will not do you should read it. so if you haven't read try to get a copy of this and then start reading because it is full of what we call practical wisdom you know practical wisdom i must say that so it is a great philosopher and pragmatic you know about francis bacon you should understand that he had read all the great roman and greek authors and he was fully you can say immersed in the bible you can see quotations from the bible especially solomon and also even his style direct uh, a direct uh, style you know that is he has taken from all the bible influenced by by the influence of the bible in bacon is very very clear that is it is so obvious we can see his sentences we can compare the way he writes and uh, king james version that is an authorized version or any translation for that matter we can go through and see the difference see the see the similarities so by see you it will be very if you if you have if you find time and if you can i would say i would humbly request you you should, if you are, if you are a student of this treasure you must read all the 58 essays no doubt about it understand if not for the other study you this can also do that it's a great book no doubt um for council small and civil this essays first of the greatest essays of english letters so bye have a nice day enjoy reading bacon also attending my classes and subscribing thank you very much for listening